Welcome to everyone. This is Arun from Astex on behalf of Astex Training Academy. This tutorial is basically to make you understand how Astex architecture is built. Basically, this will give you an insight on how Astex is built and how the core Astex works based on the architecture and how Astex makes many things possible on telephony. Astex has a great capabilities. Basically, Astix can support any uh, real-world telecom to get integrated with an Astix system. And Astix supports BRI, PRI, GSM, Pots. Pots is nothing but FXO. So Astix can also play a role of telephony gateway. So it can be a gateway between your PBX and the telecommunication uh, telecom lines. And so Astix can play a role of a telephone gateway. Astix can play a role of a web gateway, which converts traditional telephony calls into IP channels and vice versa and alt 6 can also work as an IVR system that is interactive voice response system and Astix can also work as a voicemail system Astix is completely scriptable and it you can use PHP scripts Perl scripts and uh, several other programming languages to communicate or to do certain or make some application work in Astix most of the Astix applications like FreePBX, VC Dial, A2 Building, Astix A2 Building, all these applications are basically built on Perl scripts and PHP for the front end. We will see a bit of history of Astix. Astix was originally developed by Mark Spencer, the person whom you see on this photo. And this was <coughs> developed in 1999. And Mark Spencer's had a small uh, requirement for an IVR for his office and he found it completely uh, of high price and not able to offer it for it. So he tried to make a code so that he can bring a call into a PC. So once uh, he made it, he felt that once the call is into the PC and in, with the control of the software, he can do anything with it. So since he has named it at asterisk, a wildcard symbol, which means it could be anything and can do anything possible on the telecom front. So that is very important uh, part of history. And then, of course, Mr. Jim Dixon, who really gave this hardware for the uh, real-time telecom like FXO lines and PRA cards to be uh, connected to Astex system. So he was the uh, father of Zapata Telephony project, which gave us these Aptel drivers and now these Aptel drivers are named as Dadi drivers and now an active Asterisk development community is on back and working on improving Asterisk so that is a bit of history of Asterisk we are into the Asterisk architecture the actual subject which we are going to discuss Asterisk is carefully designed for maximum flexibility so this flexibility gives Asterix the power to be uh, compatible or to be integrated with any application. And uh, specific Asterix APIs are defined around the PBX core system. This core handles the interconnection of this uh, applications for the PBX. Everything is cleanly abstracted from the specific protocols and codex and hardware which is to be used by the internal telephony application. This abstraction allows Astix to use any suitable hardware or technology or protocol which is available now in current or in future. So Astix architecture, this is a diagram of Astix architecture. Both the diagrams are same of different version but of different version. Astix is basically built of uh, different APIs, that is four different APIs. One is Kodak Translation API, and one is Asterix Application API, and one is Asterix File Format API, and Asterix Channel API. And the PBX core is what which handles the interconnection of these APIs. So we will see in detail how these APIs work. So APIs are defined for loadable modules. It facilitates hardware and protocol abstraction. The Asterix core does not have to worry about the details of how caller is connecting, what codex or in use, etc. Because Asterix code basically uh, depends on and it works on the 
indigenous asterisk protocols. So this core does not need to worry about whether the call is coming from SIP, GSM, PRI or which trunk or using which codec. And we can also use a different codec at the trunk level and at the asterisk extension level. So asterisk APIs will be seeing about the channel API first. So this channel API is one which handles the types of connection a caller is arriving in. Uh, for example, an incoming call may come through the VoIP trunk, which you are registered with the VoIP provider, or through an analog line, that is an FXO line, landline call, or it can be through a PRI or PRI call or a GSM or whatever it is. And all these different types of connections are handled by channel API. For example, if it is a PRI call, when incoming call lands, it goes to chan underscore dadi dot configuration file, which is specifically for PRI. And there it is defined where and which part of the dial plan context the call has to go. So likewise, the channel API handles which channel and how the caller comes in and all those specs. And dynamic module loads to handle the lower details of these connections. For each channel A channels, you will have certain modules. For example, for SIP, it is chan underscore SIP dot SO. For dadi, dadi underscore dot dadi chan underscore dadi dot SO. Like that for GSM dot SO. So like that you will have the uh, module files for each channel. And this is the finer details of the uh, channels and this will be handled by dynamic module loader. And then the application API. This application API allows various asterisk modules to run to perform various functions. For example, conferencing, paging, directory listing, voicemail, and all those things. And this application is also handling all the asterisk applications like, for example, you are using a dial application in your dial plan or answer application in your dial plan. All these asterisk related applications are handled by this application API. And codec translation API loads the codec modules. These codec modules are also uh, loaded as .so files in the module folder. And this codec translator API handles the encoding and decoding of this particular codec formats. And file format API handles the reading and writing of various file formats for storage of data in the file system. Asterisk score. The PBX switching connects calls together between various users and automated tasks and connects caller arriving from various hardware to the software. So this is taken care by the PBX switching. Then application launcher launches the application which performs services and then codec translator uses codex module for encoding and decoding various audio compression formats and different codecs available to suit diverse needs. And scheduler input output manager handles low level task scheduling and system management for optimal performance. So by now you have understood what are all the different architecture uh, components in Astis. You have the codec translation API which handles of the codex and application API which handles of Astis applications like paging, dialing, voicemail, etc. And Astis file format API which says which format the file has to be recorded like dot wave or which uh, uh, file gsm and all those things and asterisk channel api which handles whether the call is from iax SIP or um, dadi or fxo or gsm whatever it is so now we will also see practically how an architecture and this api and all these components of architecture is used in a simple extension to extension call okay see basically uh, in this example, you can see a diagram. We have two diagrams. In the first diagram, you can see 2001 and 2002 or two SIP phones, which are uh, connected to an Aztec system. Okay, so I'm lifting my phone 2001 and I'm calling the other person in my office who is registered to 2002. It might be an IP phone, soft phone or whatever it is. So when I receive a call, when I make a call from 2001 to 2002, I pick up my receiver of my IP phone and I dial a call. And once this activity starts, Asterix understands that an SIP channel, a channel module starts working on a 
zip call because this 2001 is a registered extension of uh, asterisk and asterisk understands that a zip channel module is going to be taken and a zip channel module uh, makes this user to make a call and according to this dial plan for example 2001 user it checks the zip.conf file what context is allowed for this particular user if he is authenticated to dial 2002 then the call is routed to that part of the context in the dial plan and according to the dial plan rules it for example in this case the dial application which is there in the asterisk application api is handled and this dial application dials out the call to 2002 okay so this is done based on the dial plan so what happens a sip phone makes a call and the sip channel module is handling the uh, call and passing it to the dial plan to the particular context and in dial plan context then again the particular asterisk application api is used so here two apis we have already used one is channel module that is sip channel uh, sip channel in the channel uh, application api and then after the dial plan we are using in the dial plan we are using the dial application which is handled by the application api and then we dial out for 2002 in that case again the sip channel module is used because again the 2002 to reach the extension 2002 we have to uh, use again a sip protocol and in between making if the sip call is answered then we decide which codec has to be uh, used to uh, voice track and then the codec translation api comes in and if this call is being recorded then the file format api comes in and where and how to record what format to record this particular conversation between 2001 and 2002 when this uh, is happening um, what happens actually is uh, we are using the channel application api for the channel module and then we are using the application asterisk application api in the dial plan to dial if uh, this case if 2002 is not available then after the dial application we may use voicemail application to put a voicemail for 2002 so now the asterisk application api is used once the call is connected then we are coming into the codec translation api and then the file format api so this is how a simple way which explains you how a call uh, extension to extension call utilizes all the application apis in asterisk and the same can be seen in the other diagram also see the 2001 calls 2002 both are sip entity so sub channel module is used using the uh, channel application api then the call is passed to the corresponding dial plan context and from the dial plan context again the application apis and codec translation api and recording file format api all are utilized in this case this call not even can be only a sip it can also be an iax call or the 2001 might call an outside uh, landline number or a mobile number so that the initiation 2001 side may be sip channel and when the call is dialed out it might be um, isdn pri or even gsm or whatever it is or even sometimes iax calls so that and one more thing we have to keep in mind channels are not line side or trunk side they are software path into our asterisk so any channel is not we, we need not worry about the line side is 2001 and the for the line side for 2001 is channel module and trunk side is a pri so that difference asterisk does not know asterisk utilizes uses uh, the dial plan just uses whatever combination of uh, channel module we wanted and however we wanted to do that okay so this is how the asterisk application uh, apis asterisk uh, channel module api asterisk file format api asterisk codec translator api all these four apis works basically and this dial plan controls all these things how to utilize after the call comes in so in this case this architecture makes us understand that once the asterisk call comes inside the asterisk system and uh, the channel module and then pass to the asterisk the dial plan that is the core of asterisk then it can be handled however it want we can use different codec levels uh, for the extension side different to the trunk side different channel protocols in the uh, extension side and different in the um, trunk side so all these combinations different variety of combinations are possible and this particular architecture makes asterisk very flexible and compatible and um, gives the complete power for asterisk to do anything and 
integrate with whatever application or whatever protocol available today now in the world or which is going to come up tomorrow so that is the power of asterisk which is all created because of this architecture which has been the core for the asterisk software and that is all about this tutorial thank you everybody and we welcome you to asterisk we have an asterisk uh, uh, training academy wherein you can learn professionally the asterisk and get certified and you can also get our professional asterisk support on asterisk support 24 7com thank you thank you